the logo, it's a Toltecian petroglyph. That means it is uh, pre-Maya and a Mesoamerican people that is very little known about because they haven't got any written, any writing system and written records. So nowadays, I guess it means Einstürzen and Neubauten. I just liked it and I knew that it was like a vessel. You could fill it with, with some uh, meaning. I, I personally think it is, uh, I mean, I, it, it looks to me that it is a human shape, right? And uh, it has no facial features, but only a, a circle with one dot in the middle. I think that reminds me a bit of the, the symbol for the sun. Also, you could say it is being focused, being concentrated, or because of the, uh, and, but I think like it is, it's heaven. Kind of. It's a celestial body. I am a uh, school dropout without any kind of monetary background, so I didn't really have much chance to do anything else, really. I uh, lived off Social Security for a while. I, uh, I was doomed and destined to um, become an artist of some sort, so that inspired me. In uh, one of my home countries, meaning Germany, I am very much considered to be an intellectual, but I can say to my defense that I, uh, I can prove that I have no graduation whatsoever. I actually, my teacher actually wrote on the back of the last thing, he wrote that I cannot go to any more public school in the Federal Republic of Germany. He just wanted to make sure that I stay out of that system. But uh, I can tell you that what I did all the time, all the 20 years that I played, actually professionally played guitar in the, in the bad seats, uh, that is, I bought a Fender once the Hofner broke down and the, because I do need the, um, the whammy bar. I do need it and I do need it to go up and down. And that hardly any, uh, hardly any of the modern guitars do that very much as much. And, and so I wanted a very generic guitar, so I bought a, I bought a uh, Fender Jaguar and a Fender Mustang because uh, you want the same kind of setup on stage every time and you don't travel with your amp. The, I just had, either I had to have a Marshall or I had to have a Fender and I decided on the Fender. So I have asked for a Fender Twin Reverb and that's what I've been put on stage all the time. And since uh, I mean, my effect pedals were somewhere stolen in the early 80s, I decided never to buy any anymore. So I always just played, plucked straight into the amp and did everything with just, uh, I had a different equalization setup for every song. So I had to go cluck, 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 and then uh, play. You can very simply impress an, an audience with just being loud. But uh, that, that can't be it. I mean, that is a little bit too simple. We, I mean, you can, you can take that to the extreme, which we did fairly recently with Neubauten. We did a, uh, a performance called Unglaublicher Lärm, unbelievable noise, where we had a room about half this size, yeah, half this size, and set up a wall of PA for like about 2,000 people across one wall of it. And we actually played upstairs in the, in the room on top of it, and. Uh, Every now and then one of us went down to see what, what it is and literally your hair, when you go down the staircase, your hairs were already going. If you would smoke a cigarette in front of that, it would go like. <laughs> it was an absolute fantastic physical um, experience, really. It was, it, we have a wonderful recording of that, which of course does not bring across the, uh, the actual physical uh, experience. but. That, that was great, but in a, like the general, the general setup in a concert, just trying to be loud is not, not going to do the trick really for me. So um, if you saw the bad seat and it was really loud, then I have to tell you, for me on stage probably wasn't. It was probably only outside. So when, while, I, while I play there, I mean, I have a 50 hertz bend in my, my hearing from which is called a disco zenke, which is like the low, you know, the lower bass things. And so, if I if I uh, want to correct that, that would mean I would like basically turn up the lower middles because I don't hear them, and I really actually don't do that. It is physically with Neubauten that was always a problem because uh, some of these things, like a, like a big metal sheet or something like that, are naturally you hit it, it is already loud, and you have to top that. In some places, like 
say France has a is completely by law now uh, you ha you have to have a sound limitation, and that is somewhere I think 122 decibels. And we were, I remember, this one in our career, we have only counted like two or three gigs. And uh, we had a gig in, um, in Paris, and uh, they were very strict about the, cost. I mean, there are technical ways around these uh, limitations, but they were very, very strict about that. And uh, we, just, we just showed them, you know, okay, turn off the PA. And you turn off the PA, we hit the sheet 100, 130 decibels. So good morning, what do you want to do? We can't hit it with a smaller hammer, it doesn't make it make it any, it doesn't work. So we had to cancel that gig. We simply couldn't play because the, the nature of the instruments doesn't allow us to do that. I mean, decibel is a, a logarithmical way of, uh, of measuring sound anyway. If you really want to, want to measure the, the physical experience on something being loud or less loud, you cannot really use decibel. You have to use a, a different, there's a different measuring unit called SON, which actually measures volume, in a, in a sense. Because two decibels is, is double as loud, two more decibels is double as loud as, uh, as two less. And so it, it does not really uh, give the a broad range, you know, a starting jet plane is a broad range of frequencies being continuously loud. That is a different thing than hitting a metal sheet once with a hammer. That is a f physically and physiologically a different effect. Still, both measured in decibel are probably the same. Same come, come up with the same figure, so that doesn't doesn't make much sense. Well, it is it's driven by by the same curiosity as as we were doing before. We have never really limited ourselves to to one particular. Uh, material one particular spectrum, as I said before, it has exploded in lots of different things. And as long as there were uh, different uh, aspects of the material world that we could explore in, in, in what we're doing, we were doing it, and we're still doing it. Somebody has pointed out that this is the, uh, that that is the first album after the wall came down. Somebody pointed out yesterday that in between Haus der Lüge, which was 1989, that means it was recorded in, still in West Berlin, but it was released already when the wall was down. That, that's also when I stopped wearing leather and uh, started wearing suits. So something must have happened then with the end of the Cold War that made me like uh, make less aggressive music, change my attire to a three-piece suit, and make more softer and subtle, uh, subtler records. Maybe that's not true, but I lie a lot.